So hi, Micro Punter here again. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can grow and enrich Paramecia and also other ciliates. Paramecia are very, very popular organisms uh, to observe under the microscope. They're fairly large, they're single-celled uh, protists and they move around uh, just like you can see right now here in the back. Um, and in nature, they can be found of course in pond water. So if you take a small sample of algae or some decaying leaves or uh, other organic material from a pond and if you put it under the microscope chances are pretty good that you're going to find a few of these. However in this video I'm going to show you now how you can concentrate them in such a way that you have really a lot of them available to be observed under the microscope. Now in schools for example and in educational settings you often want to have a good source uh, of these uh, microorganisms because of course you want that your students and that the children or if you're an amateur yourself that you have uh, plenty of, of organisms uh, to observe and what I'm gonna do later is I'm gonna show you how you can en enrich them. You can see here uh, behind me um, that there are two different types evidently um, of uh, ciliates that I have enriched, uh, the larger ones and smaller ones and uh, it's a little bit a question of luck which ones actually happen to reproduce. It depends a little bit on which uh, organisms are present in the original water sample that you enrich and what you have to um, understand that of course as well is, is that there is always a little bit of uncertainty involved because sometimes uh, different organisms develop depending on the different uh, circumstances. And I also want to now use this time a little bit to advertise my second YouTube channel, which is also microscopy related. There is a link below. Please visit that one and also subscribe to that one. And yes, I also do have an Amazon web shop. So if you're interested in microscopy as a hobby, do also visit the web shop. There are plenty of things, of accessories and microscopes uh, um, available there. But now back uh, to the ciliates and to the paramecia. Very often you can see that uh, they actually gather around solid material, usually decaying material, because what they do is, is using the cilia, these are little hair, and um, what they do is, is they take up parts of the food of these, uh, this material and they put it up uh, to soak it up and suck it up into the cell and then inside in the cell um, they digest it. So because they are single celled organisms of course they do not have a digestive system in the classical sense and they don't even have a nervous system as a matter of fact but still they move around and they seem to uh, yeah, react and respond to environmental stimuli. And here what you can see is, is that there is this large uh, piece of organic material evidently um, and other ciliates have gathered around and they're now decomposing it and uh, cleaning it up. So in that sense those microorganisms are very important for reducing the number of bacteria in a water sample uh, because bacteria being significantly smaller than they are are taken up and the bacteria then digested inside the cell. Yeah and this little fella here is going around in a circle evidently has not decided yet into which direction to move. But very often you can see that uh, those ciliates, they move towards uh, oxygen. So if there's an oxygen bubble somewhere in the microscope, sometimes they will actually gather around it. And if you have a little glass uh, of uh, with the ciliates uh, yeah, standing on your desk, if you leave it standing there for some time, sometimes you can also see that they actually collect at the very top where the air is. But now I'm gonna show you how I enriched them. And there's one thing that you need beside the pond water sample and that is a wheat grain. And what you do is, is you take this wheat grain and you crush it uh, between two spoons. There's lots of starch inside the wheat grain and this starch serves as a food for bacteria that start uh, to grow. And here I've actually uh, bought myself a whole box of these small jars which are normally used for jam or for honey. And uh, the, the starch is being broken up uh, by the bacteria and then the paramecia and the other ciliates they will feed on these bacteria. So what I've done now is I've taken uh, some of the algae containing the paramecia and I've kind of rinsed it and washed it in, in my water um, and this kind of washed out the the, the microorganisms and then I simply dropped in the crushed wheat grain and I left it in there for about two to three days. At the beginning you're not going to see a lot happening uh, but after a few days it's going to turn very soft and slimy um, and then there are probably going to be plenty of uh, my microorganisms visible. And now this is a second way in milk 
culture. You take a second little jar and, and you add a small amount of milk, just enough to make the liquid cloudy. There are fat droplets inside the milk and these fat droplets are also now a source of, of food for the microorganisms. And what will, you will be able to see is, is that while it's cloudy at the beginning, after a few days, um, it's going to clear up again. And then you can see uh, that uh, essentially the milk has been taken up um, and eaten up uh, by uh, the paramecia and the other microorganisms and this is a source of food. So you can now compare both of them after a few days. You can see that the left one that was the milk culture now all clear and the right one that one was the one with the wheat grain still very cloudy and I think I was overfeeding it a little bit. So it's probably a good idea to after a few days to remove the wheat grain again. So I'm now making a, a slide, a specimen slide. I dipped the soft wheat grain now on the slide. This kind of also transferred the paramecia now on the slide and this is what you see. Um, at least in my case, I saw these two different types of microorganisms uh, running around, floating around um, in the water sample. Make sure that uh, you use sufficient water because if, you, if uh, you do not have enough water, then the chances are pretty good that you're actually going to end up uh, compressing um, the paramecia and the ciliates. Um, this is not time lapse, by the way. Um, and uh, this can actually squash them to death. Um, and yeah, you want to observe them move around freely. So make sure that the cover glass uh, does have a slight distance uh, to the slide. If you zoom in a lot you can of course then also see, also see the different uh, cell organelles inside the paramecia um, and you can also see the uh, processes of life happening and how the organelles are moving around inside the cell. Very fascinating but also look at the hair at the cilia on the surface. Uh, these are the hair that the cell uses to move around um, and uh, also to take up food into their mouth. Well, I think for today this should be enough. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please uh, do subscribe to the channel if you liked it. Also do consider uh, visiting my web shop um, and also my second microscopy related YouTube channel. And I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye bye.